尊敬的穆塞维尼总统，尊敬的古特雷斯。Your Excellency, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Your Excellency's heads of state and government, and heads of international organizations, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to attend this South Summit as the special representative of President Xi Jinping. I wish to express my appreciation. To the government of Uganda for its thoughtful arrangements and a congr congratulations on their assumption of chairmanship, and I want to thank Cuba's efforts and contribution in the past period. The title of my speech is "Seeking Strength Through Unity and Forging Ahead with Enterprise to Jointly Write a New Chapter in South Cooperation." This year marks the 60th anniversary of the founding of the Group of 77 or G77. Over the past six decades, mechanisms such as the G77 and China have been instrumental in helping countries of the South beat a right path forward, one that advocates equality, mutual trust, mutual benefit, solidarity, and mutual assistance. Today, the G77 counts more than 130 member states, covering over two thirds of the UN membership, and has. Become an important force to be reckoned with in international affairs. Its achievements are a source of pride, and its experience is truly valuable. Independence is the defining political feature of countries of the South. Most countries of the South share a past of trudging through the mire of colonialism. We do not flinch in safeguarding national independence and dignity, and. We do not slacken in exploring development paths suited to our national realities. We never succumb to external interference, strive to safeguard the rights to subsistence and development, resolutely reject hegemonism and power politics, and hold firm in our own hands the future of our country's development and the well-being of our nations. In an ever-changing international landscape, we have gained a strong foothold. And at the same time, promoted the progress of human society. Seeking strength through unity is a glorious tradition of countries of the South. President Xi Jinping pointed out that South-South cooperation is a great creative undertaking by developing countries to seek strength through unity. We have been deepening South-South cooperation, advancing North-South dialogue, and standing together in international affairs. The G77 and China is our important cooperation mechanism within the framework of the UN. Countries of the South have also created such platforms as the BRICS and the African Union to send common messages and uphold shared interests. Not long ago, the BRICS realized a historic expansion, which. Strengthened the momentum of solidarity and cooperation among emerging markets and developing countries, and boosted the morale of the global South to forge ahead in unity. Pursuing development and rejuvenation is a historical mission of countries of the South. Seizing opportunities of economic globalization, countries of the South have been promoting trade and investment, liberalization and facilitation, and carrying out bilateral, regional, and multilateral cooperation, thereby realizing fairly fast economic and social development. Today, countries of the South account for half of the world economy, 42 percent of global trade, and half of high-tech exports. We are visibly narrowing the gap with developed countries. Countries of the South now contribute to nearly 60 percent to global growth, according to statistics from international institutions. Equity and justice are the common aspiration of countries of the South. We always address major international issues based on their merits. Making fair remarks and taking fair actions. In mechanisms including the UN, the G20, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank, we have played a constructive role. 
we have made it possible to establish new development bank, the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, the Silk Road Fund, among other financial institutions, guiding the trend of international cooperation and making the global governance system more fair and equitable. Ladies and gentlemen, changes and seeing in a century are unfolding at a faster pace in the world. And the collective rise of countries of the South is unstoppable. Yet the unjust and inequitable international political and economic order from the past continues to have lingering effects. Factors hindering world peace and development have not been eradicated and countries of the South are facing an increasingly complex external environment. We need to renew our efforts to forge a united, equal, balanced, and inclusive global development partnership and build a community with a shared future for mankind. To this end, I wish to put forward three proposals. First, we need to be brave and determined in exploring our path to modernization. Modernization as an aspiration is universal among all countries, but the ways leading to it cannot fit into one single model. We need to put our people at the center, stay grounded in our own realities and traditions, learn from other civilizations, and explore paths to modernization that fit our own development. We need to seize the opportunities created by the latest round of technological revolution and industrial transformation, thus achieving leapfrog economic and social development. China is advancing the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation on all fronts through a Chinese path to modernization. We look forward to joining hands with countries of the South and achieving modernization together, leaving no one behind. Second, we need to pursue higher quality South-South cooperation. Countries of the South at various stages of development and with diverse endowments of resources enjoy considerable complementarities in economic structures. We need to seek strength through unity, enhance the synergy of development strategies, and continue to unlock the potential for cooperation to make countries of the South more competitive as a whole. China is ready to focus on practical cooperation and capacity building and conduct cooperation in a broader way and in more areas to unleash the potential for growth, address the difficulties holding back development, and improve people's well-being. Third, we need to actively participate in the reform of the global governance system complying to the common call of all countries, especially developing countries, and raising our representation and voice in meaningful ways is critical to tackling the age-old problems in international governance. We need to jointly call for an equal and orderly multipolar world and a universally beneficial and inclusive economic globalization, build an open world economy, firmly promote trade and investment, liberalization and facilitation, resolutely oppose the attempt to roll back globalization and abuse the concept of security, and foster a global environment conducive to the development of countries of the South. We need to jointly support the reform of the WTO and the international financial system, and to make international development agencies more efficient in supporting countries of the South. We need to bring development to the center of the global economic policy framework, urge developed countries to earnestly deliver on their commitments of official development assistance and climate financing, and speed up the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Poverty is a primary challenge for the development of countries of the South. China encourages the UN Secretary General to nominate a special envoy for poverty eradication in order to promote global poverty reduction. Ladies and gentlemen, China firmly supports countries of the South in realizing common development. 
In the early days of its founding, New China began assisting other countries to the best of its capacity. More than 70 years on, thousands of complete projects and projects for providing goods and materials have been implemented. Over 10,000 technical cooperation projects have been conducted and over 400,000 training opportunities have been provided to developing countries. In all these endeavors, we have never attached political strings or interfered in other countries' internal affairs, winning deep friendship from countries of the South. In recent years, President Xi Jinping has put forward the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, the Global Development Initiative, GDI, and the Global Security Initiative, GSI, and the Global Civilization Init Initiatives, GCI. The aim is to promote common development, lasting stability, enduring security, and mutual learning among civilizations, and laying the groundwork for a bright prospect of peace, security, prosperity, and progress in the world. Belt and Road Cooperation has had more than 3,000 projects and uh, galvanized over 1 trillion US dollars of investment globally in the past decade since its launch. The GDI has generated more than 10 international cooperation platforms in its eight priority areas and over 200 cooperation projects on the ground. Working closely with 20 international organizations, China has implemented over 130 trilateral cooperation projects in nearly 60 countries in areas such as poverty reduction, food security, public health, and climate change. More than 30 million people have benefited from these projects. And the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development received a good boost. President Xi Jinping has underlined that China, as a developing country and one of the global south, has invariably stood in solidarity with fellow developing countries through thick and thin. China will continue to take South-South cooperation as a priority in its cooperation with other countries. Stand together and work in concert with G77 members and contribute to the common development of countries of the South with its philosophy and progress in pursuing Chinese modernization. Thank you.